So this is Sister Bernadette Bowman and her husband Tony and Scott and Sue. And if you guys want to sit while they're talking, you can. If you want to start, it doesn't matter. Who's going to start? You want to start? Do both mics work? Yes, they both do. Okay. And you had to hold them up. So there you got it. I'm just going to hand it over to her. I guess I'll start. This is Scott, um, my strong husband there on the right, my right, and um, Summer, my 17-year-old. Um, she's our miracle baby. She's our miracle baby of the church. Um, I don't know if you all know, but a long time ago, I had three doctors tell me that I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't have wouldn't have a baby of my own. But uh, I came forward to. Uh, George Sr., Pastor George Sr., he called for the elders of the church. He called uh, Sister Jeanette up here. And uh, when he called um, Sister Jeanette, I was like, whoo, she's, she's got all these kids running around. If anybody, if anybody was going to lay hands on me, that's, that's the one. So she laid hands on me, and um, she didn't know what was wrong with my body. I did not share it with... Uh, Sister Nancy or uh, George Sr., Pastor George, um, or even uh, Sister Jeanette. You know, it, it was a personal, personal level thing, but when she prayed over me, she prayed over me, she, uh, she mentioned every single part that was wrong. And so from there forward, a year later, with the church behind me, they called me Mama Sue. Um, there came summer. So I wanted to share that with you because I should have been up here when we did the 40-year testimony, and I didn't. So we'll just punch the devil there. One, one in the left eye for him, and I'm going to give him one more before we start. There's Winter. She's 15 years old, and when I was on my last um, trimester of pregnancy, seven months in, they told me she had a hole in her heart. And, um, well, I, I know God answers prayer, but I, you know, I, I got with my husband and I called Pastor John, and I think he was his first month here as a pastor, you know, and he prayed over the phone with me. And I, I, it was an emergency. I couldn't wait to call for the elders this time. I needed something done right away. And um, the devil was sitting there talking to me, talking, talking, and I wanted, I wanted somebody with me. And I had my husband, but I wasn't sure the devil was working on me. I wasn't sure if I was in on it. So it's just to get more people in that prayer. And so I connected my husband, and we connected with Pastor John. And then later on, I found out that he grabbed Leah's hand, and he led me in a prayer. And when two or three agree in the midst of him, he'll be with us. So um, that's an introductory to my family. <laughs> that's my girls. Um, so I'll get into uh, how I met Bernadette. About three and a half years ago, my mother-in-law um, was fighting cancer. And we went to the Hope Lodge in Hershey. And she was going to stay there and have outpatient treatment um, to, uh, I guess, do her go back and forth between um, this building. And inside the Hope Lodge, um, there was a big, long hallway with all these different bedrooms. And then what everybody had in common there was everybody was fighting cancer, different type of cancer, but they all were fighting this, and they were going back and forth to the hospital, and they all had, you know, to get healing. But outside of that big, long hallway was a nice, big living room with a fireplace, a library, a dining room, a kitchen. It was a place that um, they shared it. It was like a house, and, and I really, really... Um, I was affected how um, the transformation of just watching all these different people, cancer, coming together, um, and they were beaten. They were beaten this disease. And praise God, my uh, mother-in-law, she's healed. She's she beat two cancers since. Um, so God put that in my heart. I, I really liked seeing that. You know, I do rental business, but I, I thought, Lord, I want I want to make a difference. You know, if you're not going to come back in my lifetime, I don't know if you are or not, but if you're not, when I'm sitting in a rocking chair and I'm 100, you know, what did I do with my life? You know, I want to do something. Give me something to do. And um, the House of Hope is the name that he gave me. And that was three and a half years ago. He gave me that name. So I didn't know if it was going to be a homeless shelter 
I didn't know if it was going to be for widows, for kids. I didn't know what it was going to be. But I met my dear friend last fall, and she already had the House of Hope, Hope name picked, and it's a recovery home. So I'm going to introduce you to Sister Burnett. Hi, guys. My name is Bernadette Bowman. And first and foremost, I'm a woman in long-term recovery. Three years. Um, I came to this uh, because I had two children that were addicted to heroin. And I went to our county commissioners, and I went to our judges, and I couldn't figure out what to do. Here I was, a woman. I was a heavy metal DJ, is what I was. Uh, for years, had my own show, thousands, well, probably more than hundreds of thousands of people were connected. Um, four years or three years ago, I decided I didn't want to be that anymore. That wasn't what was pulling me to get things done. I was married to a man from Fayetteville, and I had a life of heck for a long time. He was an alcoholic, a chronic alcoholic, in and out of prison for the whole time we were married. Um, he would get DUIs and he would go to court and they would just give him what PennDOT said that they would give him as far as time in jail. It was never rehabilitation, it was never any help, it was never nothing. They would just put him in prison. His 10th DUI killed him. Um, after my husband was killed, um, I got with Tony Bowman. Um, I knew him from high school. We went to high school together. He said I wouldn't give him the time of day, but I was just trying to get over the fact that my childhood was crap. Um, my mother was terrible, so I've been through a bad childhood. I've been through bad marriages and bad men. I've been through abuse, sexual and physical. Um, and I just needed to do something with myself. We had all these people that were on heroin. Nobody wanted to do anything. The county said, well, what are we going to do, Bernadette? They'll just weed themselves out. Why help them? The, you know what I mean? If they're going to die, they're going to die. There's, like, nothing you can do. And I was like, well, watch me. So I created, I went under a 5013C in Waynesboro under New Hope Shelter, God bless them, and um, created Esther House. It was a house of hope, in a sense, for eight women. I created that from a hair, a hair salon. I made one big bunk room, I had four bunk beds, I housed eight women. For a whole year, I ran that whole establishment with no budget. I went to the county and asked them for money to do this, to help me do this, because I am certified. I'm a certified recovery specialist, a recovery coach. I have um, a background in trauma. The, um, and, and that's the bottom line. We've got to fix what's wrong with them before they're ever going to get right. And. Um, the county says, well, we're not going to give you no money. Why would we want to give you money? We're not going to condone that and help with that. And I was like, well, OK. Don't give me no money. I'll do it myself. And they were like, well, you'll never be able to do that, because you're going to need federal and county and state. And I said, I don't need anything, because I got this. So I left that establishment last April. I left with no paycheck because I wanted to prove a point. Number one, my dad never raised a quitter. I wasn't throwing in a towel, and I knew that even though I helped all the women that I helped in the years that I've helped, there were way more women to come. There were way more women to come. And then I realized that the judicial system here is crap. You know what I mean? They're not helping them. They're not going to help them. We have to make other alternatives. The judicial system's not making a way for them, so we had to take it upon ourselves to do that. The lunatic that I was thought that I could just go up there and say that this is what we were going to do. Nobody wanted to hear that because we've got the good old boy system going here in Franklin County. And we have people that are running things that shouldn't be running things. 
and making decisions that shouldn't be making them. What I have is life experience because I've lived it on every end of the spectrum. What they have has been book taught. They have never found their son overdosed in the bedroom. They have never fought like a lunatic to get their daughter into treatment because she was out selling her body and doing things she shouldn't be. They weren't raised that way. I was a single mother in a sense, you know, because my husband wasn't there because he was drunk. But I gave them morals and I gave them, you know, the, the way that they should be. But that all changed when they, the addiction took over. Addiction's a disease and it needs to be treated as such. And we can't just fix one of those things. We have to fix it all. And there's a whole sphere that goes with that. And I always use it that you can have a car, if you have a car with two flat tires, you can't fix one of those tires to get to your destination. You gotta do it both. And that's what we've got with the addiction and mental illness. Because probably 97% of the people that I deal with have both. And they're both from trauma. And trauma is the root of all this. That's why I decided to open the House of Hope here in Chambersburg. I'm the director and the founder of that. And I'm under the 5013C of Maranatha Ministries. Maranatha has a huge um, food pantry. We have Candle Heart. We run the cold weather shelter. We give to women in need. And they've left me come under them to do this. This property that I have at the House of Hope, it's at 230 East Queen Street in Chambersburg. It was bought for me for this purpose. Because I'm also an interventionist. Like you see on TV, like I don't act like that. Usually by the time I'm done, they just want to just call wherever you need to go, burn. Amen. Because I need to go. I've seen her in action already. We you know, <laughs> I've, done, I've done some off-the-wall things because sometimes that's just what you need to do. If you're a mother and you have a child and you're enabling that child and that child's happy with you and they're an addict, you are killing them. If they are happy with anything that you're doing and they're not mad at you because you're doing the things that you're doing, like taking away their money, taking away their car insurance, taking away their phone, then you are killing them. This thing has touched people that we don't even know. Your sisters, your brothers, your bosses, your pastors, our DAs, our lawyers. You know what I mean? It does not discriminate, and it can be in any family. Out of 15 boys on a ball team that my son played on for Quincy, Cal Quinn was a merge between Quincy and Caledonia. Out of 15 of those boys, 13 of those boys are dead from opiate overdose. And that was, they played from Little League, well, T-ball, then they went to Little League to Pony League, clear up through. And I didn't realize this till one day I was at the Twin Kiss ordering a sub in Quincy. And they had all the pictures on the wall. And I was counting them. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like, we've got to do something. So my husband and I went to the DA and said, you know, we need to do something. Oh, well, this is going to go away. It's just going to stop. Look at how it was, you know, back when they were smoking crack. And I said, well, this is a way different devil. You think this is going to happen and it's going to go away? It's not going to go away because it's in the brain. You know what I mean? Back then, they just stopped doing those things because they didn't have money or ways or means. These people need this to live because they've become addicted to it. And it can happen in a six-day prescription from the doctor. You know what I mean? It gets you. The only thing that I can figure out that I needed to do for them was give them a structured program and a home environment. And that's what the House of Hope is. It's a great big old Victorian that we've refurbed, and it's turned out more than I ever expected it to be. 
It's a place where they can come and they can heal. Um, I've created the program. When I created Esther House, I created the program at Esther House, and it's the same here. I'm trained in moral recognition therapy and cognitive thinking. There are two things that you've got to have to go on with life. And some of these women don't have that because it's never been embedded in them. It's never been taught to them. And the only guidance that the women that we deal with or are going to deal with is, is they didn't have the parenting role. Their parents were prison guards. Because I bring these girls right out of jail. They um, come for the 90-day program. If they need more than 90 days, I've been known to keep them a lot longer. Because some of them, you know what I mean? I can't really turn them loose into public because they're not ready for public yet. You know, they still got things to work on. They're still scared. They're still on probation. They still have things that they have to do to get to where they need to be. Um, we had community help with this because the county wouldn't help me. They said they weren't giving me no money. And we got this house and we had to refurb it. So I called Frank County Probation because they will work with me. And I asked them for community service. Who, who you got with for community service? And then people came. Lots of people came. And that's what we did. We had um, donations. Everything's been donations from the packs of underwear I have in the closet to the shampoo that they're going to use when they get out. Um, we have totally redone the house. Um, on the inside, it still needs a lot of work on the outside. Uh, we had to um, incorporate another ADA bathroom, which we're working on that right now. Um, we still need a lot of help with that, I think, because we need borough, Yeah, permit. We've got permits coming. Yeah, and they have to be licensed through the borough. It's the craziest thing. Like Waynesboro, I could just call Joe down the street and say, "Hey, need a toilet put in." They would come up and do it. But the borough here in Chambersburg is not like that. Um, I don't really know what else to say about it other than I'm um, well, I have a letter um, I wanted to share I'm gonna leave the name out and maybe some pieces um, if you guys um, have it in your heart and if you want to pray for this person um, we'll just call her Tiffany she wrote to um, my friend here and um, she's in Fra she was in Franklin County Jail and she was looking to be released, and she wants to join a good church and a Bible study group. And so um, she wants to come to the, to the House of Hope, um, and also she wants to, a good church. And so um, if you want to keep her, I'm not going to say her name, if you want to keep her in your prayers, because um, there might be somebody in here that wants to be a, a mentor. So we're looking for female mentors, if you feel it in your heart. Um, this is this is somewhere that I want to serve. I want to step out, um, and maybe just once or twice, or you might connect with somebody. So um, if you want to pray for her, and we are getting more and more letters from um, ladies in in jail. Yeah, I received um, five of them last week. Right now, they're just hanging out until their release dates. And my idea is, since I'm under Maranatha Ministries. Craig has um, made way for me to save three or four of the bed bedrooms in Candleheart. Like if they're coming out before the house is done, I can put them in Candleheart and work with them because I'm a certified recovery specialist and I work with the people in that program. So that was great because we thought for net by now we would have the permits already. Like we've already sent them in once, had to get a, a, a uh, architect, and then we also had to give uh, sprinkler systems. The lady that owns the house called the sprinkler company the other night or the other day and arranged for that. So that'll soon, that's going in as we speak. It's in the motion. Um, we need like an outpouring of community help like with these people. Like if you've got, if you craft or if you crochet, or if you quilt, or whatever, come share that with me.
because like I said, it's a structured program it's from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. They're going to have things to do. I'm going to have in-house NAAA. I'm going to take them out for AANA. I just need the, you know what I mean, a warm, a warm hand with mine. Because like I said, the county calls me a wonder, but I ain't Wonder Woman. I can't do it all. Um, some of the things that we're going to offer for them is uh, the recovery support, because a lot of people don't have that. You go to treatment, you go to treatment to detox, and then you're there 28 days, and they're like, okay, it's time for you to go back home. Takes them way more than 28 days to get to where they're at. So they, you know what I mean? They need ongoing help. Um, building their self-esteem. A lot of these women don't have it. They may have had it as a child, they may not have. But as they've gotten older and have, you know, done the things that they've done to get to where they are, you know what I mean? They've lost that, and we have to give it back to them. If they don't have a high school education, we got to get them one, because you all know we can't get nowhere without that. And, you know, they're in jail, but jail's not worried about what we're, they're going to do after. As long as they follow their parole and probation, they could care less what happens to them. Parenting skills, lots of them don't have that, but they have children, and a lot of the children come through and they're with CYS, and they go to the ABC house. One of the reasons I picked this house is because I'm less than a block away from there. Those girls can leave House of Hope, walk right down to ABC house and visit with their kids, and set up parenting classes through them. Um, budgeting skills. Usually when they got a paycheck, they were in the city buying what they needed to. They never had to budget. How to run a household. Probably never ran a household because they lived with their mother, you know what I mean? Who knows what their life, life was. The benefits to good health, physical, mental, and spiritual. We need to show them where Jesus is at. Jail don't teach that. They give them, I think, twice a month. They have a pastor go in, and that's what the jail's got. And an individual stabilization plan for them. We can keep them where we've got them for 90 days, but what happens after that? I want that recovery plan. When I do that recovery plan for them, I want them to give me three goals that they want to achieve, and I want to help them get there. If they come through my program, we have money available here in Franklin County for rapid rehousing. They come to Bernadette's 90 days, they leave there. We can take them down to Candle Heart and get them their own place. We have programs with reentry that if, if they don't have a job or a, their job's not paying enough, we can help them get an apartment. And the first bonds, rent, and security deposit we can help them with. If they're in the IRCM program through the jail, we can help them with six months rent. First month we pay the rent, second month we bump it down, clear till when they can pay their own rent. That's stuff that they need because that gives them grounded housing. And we're not gonna have to worry about in six months from now, what are they gonna do? They can't pay their bills. They don't have a job that pays enough. You know what I mean? And we have to get these women out and about and get them jobs. I've worked with women that have never, 35 years old and have never filled out a job application. I mean, how's that even happen? Well, I learned that in school, in Waynesboro School. Anybody that wants to help is more than welcome to help because the vision of this is to create more. I've already consulted with um, Scotland School for Veterans Children three years ago about doing this. I went on to create two programs, two separate programs in two different communities. Scotland School has offered buildings that are out there for the same thing that I did here. Maybe we could do a mom and kids program out there. Send them through House of Hope 90 days send them to the mom and kids program, get them acclimated back with their children and be able to return them all to society. Because a lot of these women have sat in prison two years, some up to four years. 
and who knows how many times they've been violated in and out away from their kids. If we're gonna reunify, that's how we have to do it. And I just need all the help that I can get to make all this happen. I've got the properties to create more, and I'm interested in doing a men's house. There's one on Franklin Street that would make a perfect men's house. Then I'll need male mentors. And then we're also having trouble finding halfway housing. Like these people have already burnt their bridge with their parents and their family. They're not gonna take them back after prison, and they have to be promised a home plan for 90 days or more. I wanna be more than a home plan for them. Even if they would be in a home plan house, I want them to know that they're loved and that they're worthy. And that whatever their last mistake was, they don't have to live by that. And I'm gonna let my husband now talk because he's got a testimony in his self and he was a big help for me because what he learned, he showed me from where he came from. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Tony, like they said. Okay, thanks, Mom. <laughs> uh, first of all, thanks for having us in here and willing to listen to us. God is good. God is awesome. Um, I guess um, to start off with, my passion is this, is the passion that my wife has. Um, to just give a brief rundown, I have an extensive criminal background from my youth. I was uh, born and raised in a very well-off family that um, gave me some sense of entitlement. If you had one I wanted, I was entitled to take it. It took me 16 years probably to learn a lesson that what I wanted I need to go get for myself and become a man. Um, it took me pr probably close to that time to learn that everything that I've been through and did wasn't the uh, police officer's fault, it wasn't the victim's fault, it wasn't the district attorney's fault, it wasn't the judge's fault, it wasn't the parole officer's fault. It was all on me. And uh, where I finally figured that out, that was a big turning point in my life. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I've been, today, the third, in four days, I will be 12 years clean from cocaine. Uh, That was another big problem. You know I me, mean? once I learned that I can't do that, it didn't like me, it was the devil. You know what I mean? And um, in the experiences of that, I've seen, witnessed, done, met people who have done some horrible, horrible things in life. And it seems like what my wife's passion with her children, my stepchildren, brought out was that Men can make some women especially do some outrageous things that they would never do with the drugs. And that's what made me side with her for the women's thing is that I've seen, witnessed, you know what I mean, it becoming not just drug abuse, it becomes, it may start out as emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, sex trafficking, you know what I mean? What I've been through, I've never seen a profitable female drug dealer because there's nothing a man has a woman wants. But a man will have that and they have the, they have the ability to find the weaker people to be able to make them do things that a normal, healthy individual wouldn't do. They take advantage. And um, I try to, bring the male side of that to help the girls and I guess uh, she's my hero she's my big I'm her biggest supporter I hope I mean uh, 
like I said, the first place that we got going was Esther's house, the New Hope Shelter headed in construction for two years, never went nowhere. We got involved within four months, it was open. Yeah, and with women in it. And um, this one we took over September 1st. That's one thing that for the House of Hope, this was a known drug house right behind the borough police barracks that it was well known by the Chambersburg School District. It was a keep your kids away from house. And now it's a drug free zone that the community I mean, I've personally gone around and let everybody around the neighborhood know that all that nonsense is gone, is not there, is not wanted, is not liked. And the community's been awesome so far. Um, like I said, everything has been done is pretty much by volunteer and donation. Uh, we are struggling with the permit stage right now. Uh, we will be licensed as a, well, we will have an Oxby permit as a drug and alcohol recovery program that in 2020 will be licensed by the state of Pennsylvania as a recovery program. That is one benefit that will be ahead of the game on anything else in the area. And we're also an MAT helps medically assisted treatment where if they, need, if they need Suboxone, Subutex, whatever it is, to get them away from what they're doing, we support that. On my board of directors, we have a physician's assistant that's more than willing to set up to help us do that. And there are none here in Franklin County, anywhere near. So, um and what we've seen already work is that, um, and what part of what we come here for is what you have to offer these women. You know what I mean? Your grace, your love, your compassion, your mentoring abilities. I've personally seen how much the community outreach to these people that think they're worthless means. I mean, um, not this past Christmas, but the Christmas before at uh, Esther House, people from the community just dropped off simple things. Bath and Body Works lotions, you know what I mean? Some hats, gloves, some coats. And you'd have thought them girls got a pot of gold. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just amazing what people can do for other people just with tiny bits of encouragement. Um, the program always created the biggest thing that I learned myself is accountability and consequences. You know what I mean? You got to learn accountability and consequences to be a productive member in society and to gain the, the control of your life that you need to do. Because it is a lot of self-control that people have a problem with sometimes. But uh, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> but the, I mean, there, there's a passion that extends from her to me that I can get very riled up and political and I'm not a political person. So, but uh, the county has a very different perspective in who they support and what they want than what we've actually done our homework and researched with. We are s sort of partnership with a 200 bed facility down in Richmond, Virginia, McShin Foundation. They are willing to come up and give us what they, whatever they have at a phone call or we can get down there for trainings and, you know what I mean? To, to, they share experiences and responsibilities and we're doing the exact same thing they were eight years ago. I mean, we're still taking the baby steps to get where we want. We want what they have. They have women's houses, they have men's houses. They, ha they actually have a condominium building that has apartments that two recovering addicts 
that are responsible for each other. And they pay rent. You know what I mean? It's not a free ride. And uh, that's something like what we would like to have is a growing, healthy environment to help these people get fixed and fix themselves and be able to be a stable person for their loved ones. Not just their kids. You know what I mean? Us as kids, we got our kids to take care of after you spend the time after our kids are taken care of, then we got to take care of our parents. So, you know what I mean? That's what we want to see. We want to see everybody be healthy, safe, and be there for each other. And um, we, uh, we encourage uh, faith influence so much that um, that's why, you know what I mean, for the mentorship and stuff that we, we don't want to force them anywhere, but for them to be in recovery and say they are going to have to find Jesus Christ. And, you know what I mean, as many avenues as we can open up to them, to their liking, is just going to be the better result in the end. So, uh, I guess with that, I'm about done. Um, the house, the house has four bedrooms. Um, there's three bedrooms um, that are going to be used. The bunk beds. There's three sets of bunk beds in the first bedroom. The second bedroom has two sets of bunk beds. Um, the third bedroom has two twins. And the fourth will be for Bernadette's office. And off the office is a little balcony. If she wanted to do like a one-on-one -on -one council with the girls, um, it's there. And then there's a stairs coming down with a handicap lift. If we had somebody that was handicapped, so it's gonna be handicapped accessible. Everything has to be through ADA, right? ADA regulations, which Tony is up on that. Um, Scott's helping with the maintenance. We have a small kitchen, large dining room. This this house doesn't look big, but it's long. And just like the Hope Lodge that I seen um, in Hershey, it was a long hallway with the bedrooms to the side. Downstairs is this beautiful fireplace with a nice library and a nice um, living room. And the kitchen, what we would like to do is maybe put something in um, to crock pot and each girl, when, it, when it's their turn, they could do side dishes, side dishes, because some of these girls are coming right out of jail and they might've went in jail when they were so young and never learned to cook. So um, we're gonna teach them how to cook. So if anybody wants to come in and give them a cooking lesson, um, come see me or um, Sister Leslie. Um, any kind of talents that you can give, don't overlook them because um, they'll be used. And I want the girls, I want the girls to know they have a purpose. God has a purpose in their life and he can set them free. Our, our, my girls are already miracles. I mean, there's miracles happening all the time, every day um, in this world. And I just want them to know that God loves them. And, and um, so that's my message to them when I see them. I just want to love on them and just let them know that um, it doesn't have to be that way. And they, they can have a support system and before I forget, um, if anybody would like to don donate time or anything, um, some of the areas that we are in need help of is a borough licensed uh, electrician, a borough licensed plumber, and then um, we have a think. If I remember the measurements right, it's 30 foot by 30 foot area of the backyard that needs excavated for a parking area. Uh, we have two porches in need of some minor repair to me and an 18 foot long handicap accessible ramp built from the one porch out towards the parking area. And I can't read a tape measure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, we, we've, the, the house took a lot of lipstick and mascara, as I say. We've had, um, I think there's at least 40 gallons of paint put inside that house that was all donated by a couple different Sherwin Williams uh, owners and following spring paint and wall covering that has helped us out a whole lot. 
but we're getting down to the nitty gritty of we've done everything that we can legitimately do without having a permits yet except for repair like the porches we can repair existing right now but who wants to repair a porch with snow and mud and cold you know what i mean but uh that's what we're really in need of i mean i'm not a carpenter but i do the best i can with my abilities and scott's been a great help with coming along with that along with the volunteers and uh uh community service people but it's it's came a long way in what's it been five months five months i mean it's been a long hard struggle but it's they've been in it it's changed since you were just there yesterday it's changed a whole lot yeah we got carpet in all the bedrooms now so and the the beds, are the beds are placed so i mean everyday changes are being made and be, accomplishments are being accomplished so huh. oh then that's another thing we need six six twin mattresses and we'll as long as they're yeah, as clean and they're decent and usable if you wouldn't if you wouldn't want to sleep on it, I'm sorry to say we probably don't want anybody else to sleep on it. I mean, in all honesty, I mean, if you'd sleep on it, we'd glad to have it. So, I mean, uh, and I guess we need a couple, two or three box springs for a couple beds, but most of it's just the mattresses yet. I think we have, I guess we'll find out this afternoon what we have for linen and bed sets yeah. yet. Yeah, so. But I had back. It came in when I opened Esther House. But I knew that I needed, I was going to need more than what I had. When I left there, I left everything, but took these tubs that I had put back to save. And I think I may have 12 comforter sets. So I might be okay for bedding and pillows. Another thing, it's always needed is paper supplies you know what i mean toilet paper paper towels napkins paper plates you know what i mean it's just stuff to there's a list i think Sue out um, okay yeah there, there is i don't know what all i know we provided you with some stuff but i don't know where it's located at <laughs> okay she said there's a thing that shows what we're looking for. There's a pamphlet for House of Hope and some of my wife business cards out on the table out front. All right, for me not shutting up, it's about that time. Do you want to see? Here's Scott. Here. Here's Scotty. Uh, I really didn't want to speak here today, but uh, <laughs> when they asked me, I knew that I had to. One way or another, I had to. <laughs> Here it is, 11.30 already. They were all worried about they wouldn't be able to talk long enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, this problem that it's hit almost every family. If it hasn't hit your family, you're really blessed and lucky. Uh, I know my family's had a few people that had drug addictions and and a lot of people give up on them because they want, they want to steal from you. They take anything they can get. And I've even heard other family members saying, you know, I wish they'd just get it over with and overdose and get it over with. And, and God never gives up on anybody. And we should never give up on anybody either. I even got into that mindset where you see people on TV where they've overdosed 10, 15, 20 times. I think... They're never going to amount to anything. But some people do come back, and they do amount to something. Uh, another thing I wanted to say is uh, when they said about the house changing, we left there at 3 o'clock yesterday afternoon, and when they took pictures of us in there, they still had plastic on the floor in the bedrooms. And now they got the carpet all down and everything, and it looks a lot better in there. It's, it just changes every time you see it. And 
this is why me and Sue are behind us all the way. And anything you can do to help be appreciated. Thank you. Okay, so um, thank you so much for sharing your hearts. Um, appreciate that. If Sister Sonona um, would come up a while, I asked if she would sing a special. We are going to pass um, an offering plate around. Uh, don't feel funny if you're like me most of the time. I do not have money with me over here because I've already prepared and done what I had to do in the system. Um, but I wanted to let you know that um, we will be collecting the whole month of March towards this. Um, but whatever comes in today, you know, if you want to write a check right to Freedom in Christ Church, we'd like to give them a check at the end um, of the service after, you know, it'll take a little time. We'll go back and count. We'll go ahead and write a check. If you want to put cash in, that's fine. And if you can't, don't worry about it. You know, we're doing this for the whole month through the church because we really support this. Um, Sister Bernadette says that it will cost, like for one lady that comes straight from the prison, it will cost 100 bucks a week to stay at their place. But I mean, and we can totally relate here because you know what it costs to take care of your home, you know, and your toiletries and your food and your rent and whatever. I mean, it, it takes money to make these things happen. But like she says, she's also a nonprofit organization. So um, we totally 100% are in agreement with what she's doing. I'm thankful that she's got a heart to help people because, you know, when I talked to her yesterday, um, one thing that she said, and it stood out to me, she's like, you know, some people are against the Narcan and the other stuff. But she says, you know what? That's one more day we got them alive. And that really impacted me because that's true. One more day to keep someone alive. As long as they're alive, there's still hope for them. So uh, it's really, really an important thing. Sister Bernadette and Tony, I thank you for what, what you've got going on. And um, I wanted to say, uh, I told her, you know, while well, I was telling my husband, they remind me of my in-laws, Pastor George and Sister Nancy back there. You know, they had the hard ground to plow starting this church i mean pastor george you know he knew all the the rough and rowdy gang you know back then and of course i wasn't in the picture back then but you know i hear a lot of the stories and um, i see the change that you know he's made in his life i see the impact it's made on his whole entire family which i'm now blessed to be a part of um, but he had the hard ground to plow and he's still a very hard worker to this day and he still has a heart um, to save people and help people, you know, and bring them the word and just show them, you know. He's been a wonderful witness. Sister Nancy's been a wonderful witness. She's got a miracle, you know, and a healing in her body, you know. There they are in the middle of their ministry, and she comes down with stage four cancer, you know. And people think, oh, my goodness, you know, how can that happen? But, you know, bad things happen. They come along, but what are you going to do in the midst of it? And then, you know, my husband comes off with his wonderful explaining about how we pray and we believe you know bad things do happen to good people but what are you going to do in the middle of it are you going to just roll over and lay down and say you know what i quit or are you going to stand up and fight the good fight of faith i mean this is what we have learned in this church and uh pastor george and sister nancy i thank you for that because you know what if it weren't for you starting it way back then i wouldn't be here now and i'm thankful for that because i know god's done a miracle in my life but what we're going to do right now, does everyone who knows that they're going to be bringing the offering plate, if you could get them a wow and come on up, do you know? Okay. Go ahead. And come on up front and then just start and uh, go to the back. And Sister Sonona is going to bless us with some music. And then afterwards, I'm going to go back and I'm going to count it. Um, and yeah, so if you want to um, support this at all this month, you can feel free to fill out an envelope and just write House of Hope. I think it's kind of neat because Sister Alma has the Pantry of Hope. So it's all about hope. You know, it's wonderful. It's, it's Praise God, it's just great. But um, Sister Bernadette does have the pamphlets and her business card back there. And like she says, that blue house that you were seeing, that's the house two doors down from the police department right on Queen Street. If after this month is up and you still want to be a part and you still want to be helpful in that area, 
they'll take the money because you know they could use it i mean it costs money i think you said your rent is eight 800 a month, you know, so they have to come up with this. So she's not looking, you know, to get rich or anything. She wants lives saved and help. So praise God. Go ahead. So um, we're going to close the service right now, and I'm going to close in prayer. Thank you um, to everyone who participated in this. Um, they can always use prayer. Just keep this family in prayer as they're plowing that hard ground. So I'm going to go ahead and end this service. Oh, and I want to let you know before I pray, we are going to cancel for this evening's service due to the weather. Um, so we figure we'll just let you know early. That way you can relax at home and do what you got to do and enjoy your families. But we will be back at it Wednesday night. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for those that come out today. Father, I thank you, Lord, um, for this wonderful couple here that is out there doing work for you, Father God, trying to help people. Father, I ask a special blessing on Sister Bernadette and Brother Tony, Father God, that you would give them the wisdom and the guidance that they need. We call in favor for them in the name of Jesus, that whatever they put their hands to will prosper and that anything that they need will be provided for them in Jesus' precious name. Father God, we do have the faith in you to know that father god you open doors that they don't even see ahead of them father god and you're going to bring forth that help that they need to make make this successful and father we do pray for these women in the franklin county prison that are going to be coming through this program father god i ask that you will meet each and every need for them lord i thank you father god for good friendships coming their way Father God, I thank you for those of us that may have had issues in these very areas. I thank you for doing a miracle in our life, Father God, and just changing our lives, Father God. Father, I just thank you for each and every person that come out today, and I ask, Father God, for your hedge of protection round about them as they go home today, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you'll speak into their hearts um, about this very service right now, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we just pray for um, all the extended families of everyone in here. We just claim healing in their bodies, Father God, and safety and protection, Father. We love you, Lord. We give you glory, honor, and praise with our lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen.